I'm Tom from Do It Yourself Home Automation, and this is a look at using the BT Renergy app, which is the app for monitoring your Renergy solar system using Bluetooth um, on an Android phone. So the first thing you have to do in order to use this app is to go to the Play Store um, and download the Renergy BT or BT Renergy app um, onto your phone. And in order to use this, you also have to have a Renogy solar panel system that has a charge controller and also has the uh, Bluetooth module. So this is my adventurer. You can see in the upper left, I have a little camera going through here. This is my adventurer uh, charge controller from Renogy. It's plugged into my side yard solar system here that I've been testing out. And then I've got a cable running down to the actual Bluetooth module, which is underneath here. Um, and that allows me to connect using Bluetooth and monitor the status of my system. Um, once you have that Renogy BT app installed on your phone, then you can connect to the device. And one note is that you have to be pretty close to it. I found you had to be about maybe 10 feet or less away. So it's not something you can access remotely. You know, if you have this at a cabin and you want to access it uh, from a different location, you have to be pretty close by in order to pull up the data on the device. Um, and the connection is not always the most reliable. So again, you really want to be pretty close to it. So this is the main screen on the app. Um, and in order to connect, if it doesn't happen automatically, you go over to device info in the lower right, and then say search for device. And it's gonna pull up all of my various Bluetooth devices that are in the area. And I found that this is not always 100% reliable. So you can see it's not pulling up um, anything that says Renogy. So I'm gonna search again. So now I'm gonna try moving around, which I find sometimes helps. And now when I do search device, this is the Renogy uh, Bluetooth module, BT, Bluetooth uh, slash, and then TH, and it's got a random set of letters there. So again, a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna say confirm. It's connecting to the device. Again, the connection is not always super reliable, but once you see uh, the device skew there, you know you are actually connected to it. So now I'm gonna go back to the monitoring tab over on the left, and that's gonna pull up the current stats on my system and my battery. Um, so right now, this is basically in shade. So it's not generating a lot of power, two watts of charge power. Um, it's gonna give me the voltage, 12.1 volts, and then calculate current there, 0.16 amps. That's the current status of the system. Um, lower down, you can see the battery stats. So uh, at the moment, the battery is at 12.2 volts. That's a 56% capacity it's calculated. It's gonna give me the battery temperature, um, which is 25 degrees C. Um, and if you have an, a remote temperature monitor, then it will tell you uh, what the temperature is at that remote monitor. I'm just using the one built into the Adventurer charge controller. Um, and then at the bottom of that screen, you can see in kind of really little type, uh, the current charge mode. So at the moment, it's in a boost charge mode, um, which basically just means that it's actively charging. If there's no power coming in at all, then it'll go into um, just sort of an idle mode. This can also go into a float mode. Uh, it's just putting a little bit of power in. Um, and uh, so you can see the mode that the system is currently in. It's a little bit small, so people sometimes miss that. Um, and then at the bottom, if you have a, a charge controller that has a load pin, um, so you can actually connect a load directly to it, you can see the voltage and the current power that the load is drawing. Uh, this gets a little bit dicey because um, you can't put too much power through that uh, pin there, so just be wary and always follow the instructions from Renogy. I usually just totally disregard that section. Um, the next screen I want to take a look at is one to the right at the bottom. It's uh, record, so I'm going to go into that. And this I actually find extremely helpful. So this is a record of the stats from the device over a particular period of time. And um, at the moment, you can see the device is kicked back off again. Um, but I can go through the previous days and get the information from it. So if it does kick off like that and you're having trouble connecting, again, weirdly move around. Go back to device info. Search again. Let's connect again. Let's go back to the record screen, see if we pull anything up. There we go. 
Um, so you can see my record for today. I've generated a very, very tiny 0.048 kilowatt hours. Um, it gives me the charge amp hours, which is four amp hours I've picked up today. Again, this is mostly in shade, um, so not surprising, but if you had a panel in full sun, you might pick up a lot more than that. Uh, the maximum charge power today, even though this is a 250 watt system, is only 54 watts. Um, again, mostly in shade. Um, but if you did have a system in full sun, you could see how much power it was actually generating at its peak generation. It's probably not going to be the full rated power, but sometimes you can be surprised. Um, and then you can see the range of battery voltages, 12.1, 12.2, so I have charged the battery just a little bit today. Um, and if you have uh, you know, more days that this has been running, just have this running for one day here, um, then you can see the total days the system has been up and the number of times the battery is over discharged. So if you pull too much power out of the battery, it'll record that and that can help you keep tabs on the battery health. Um, the number of times it was fully charged um, and then the total generation amount for the system. So that'll be the total uh, kilowatt hours that the system has generated over that time period. If you go into the settings tab at the bottom, you can set some basic parameters here for the system. Um, I usually just leave those set to uh, what the defaults are. I think that tends to work fine. But if you have a different battery voltage or anything, um, or de different definition of high and low power, you can go in and make that switch. You can also change the battery type and its rated amp hours and voltage there too. Um, so that's a look at using the BT Renogy or Renogy BT app um, on the Android phone to connect with your Renogy solar power system. Uh, if you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps.